All right, so this is how we're hooking up our um, power inverter uh, to the main battery and to the uh, vehicle itself and the vehicle's 12 volt system. Uh, once again, consult your professionals uh, to make sure that um, you're doing everything right for your current application and specific needs and demands. However, this is how I have chose to do this. Uh, you need to have a fuse. Um, now, a fuse can be a good and a bad thing. Uh, you have to have it either way. Um, but if you get these large, like I have this large 60 amp fuse right here, uh, that's going to generate the most power uh, to where I need it to go. Uh, I'm using uh, just this regular line like this. I'm using the entire cord as a, as a power inline. Uh, but I've got each one of those strands fused in here. So the uh, if, if there's ever a short or anything, um, these will pop and uh, prevent, you know, like a fire or something from happening. If you don't have this and you have a huge, huge chance of a, a fire or catastrophe or your battery blowing up or something. So I've got 260 or 230s here uh, and then uh, a 60 right here um, to allow the maximum amount of electricity to flow through, uh, but still be able to go ahead and uh, have that safety backup in case anything happens. So for more information, check out the website below here and today we want to talk about power inverters um, a large common misconception about power inverters is that you need a great big huge power inverter uh, to run most of the tools that you need to do uh, that's actually not that true I mean obviously there are more with more wattages you can run larger tools and larger instruments however most uh, people don't have them installed correctly uh, to be able to utilize the maximum power out of the ones you have here. I have here an 800 watt inverter that I use to run my lights and I have a 1500 watt inverter uh, which mounted now is probably how most people have it mounted to where you'd run a, a power cable right here from direct from the car's battery and then you would have it grounded out to a good ground source. Now that will run most things. In fact, it will turn on, it will run some lights, it will run uh, my key machine and the charger all at the same time. So right now, uh, this is about uh, drying about four and a half to five amps. Uh, it's running some LED lights, it's running battery charger over here. I can run another battery charger here. And that's enough for me uh, for most things. But what I wanna do is show you the difference of, of what you can do to maximize this. Now, if we come over here, uh, we have a air conditioner. And if we go ahead and turn the power on, you'll notice that it's gonna cut. So you can hear that and you can see it. Every time it tries to come on, it's going to go ahead and try and shut down. Uh, so what we're gonna go ahead and do today is we're going to add an external battery. Let me go ahead and shut this stuff off. Um, we're gonna add an extra battery to this. So what this battery is gonna do is it's gonna take the shock load and direct provide direct power to this inverter. Uh, now this is gonna be tied in with the existing system. Uh, basically we're just gonna hook some, some heavy duty cables up here. This is the number one spot where you're gonna be lacking uh, and losing power is in your cables. You, you can see how heavy duty this wire is. Uh, this is some super heavy duty wire. You want free flowing electricity to everything because this is what the current travels through. So we're basically gonna hook this up and tie it into this unit, and then we're gonna mount this battery right down here. Couple things that we need to talk about with that. That's gonna let me run this longer with the engine of the vehicle off, uh, but it's also gonna go ahead and uh, allow me to use the mo and get the most out of my power inverters. Let's talk about the battery for a second. You cannot just take a normal car battery uh, or lead acid battery and put it and mount it inside your vehicle. Uh, you're gonna release hydrogen gas and hydrogen gas is going to be harmful to your body and it's also flammable. You could cause an explosion. Basically when, you, when you're charging your battery uh, or you have an overcharge of your battery, uh, it needs to release that gas and that pressure in there uh, with the sulfuric acid. So the byproduct is going to be hydrogen gas. If you do not have a sealed battery, that will be in your car, and if you build up too much in your car, there could be an explosion and it could cause health problems. 
I contacted the great people over at Interstate Batteries and came up with the solution here. Now this is a lead acid battery, but as we can see on the top, it is partially sealed, okay? And we'll go into that a little bit further. Basically what it does is it has the cap sealed off, but it vents into these tubes where I've installed these two holes right here on either side, and I've installed vent tubes that we will go ahead and vent to the outside. So once we have this installed, we'll have those mounted, those vent tubes will go outside. If there's any gas released, it's gonna go through there. You need to make sure that you have the correct battery for the system. They also, you can purchase a 100% sealed battery unit uh, with about, I think between 75 and 80 amp hours uh, for a sealed battery, a 100% sealed battery unit. You're gonna be looking at about a $250 price tag. That was a little bit out of my uh, budget for what I wanted to spend for this particular unit, as this was about a hundred bucks. Um, so, you know, way less than half the cost. Plus, if this works out well, I may want to double up on my batteries and run two of these. So instead of looking at around a $500 system, uh, at the most I'm gonna be running about a $200 system, okay? So with make sure that you know what kind of battery have and make sure you know that you can vent it properly. Uh, if you go with the 100% sealed units, great. More power to you. Congratulations. Uh, they're just very, very expensive for the same amount of amp hours. That's the other thing about this battery. It's not rated in cold cranking amps. It's rated in amp hours. Amp hours is going to be 70 on this, okay? So this is the battery that I got. That's Those are the reasons why I actually called and talked to Interstate Batteries, the professionals down there and uh, got all this information from them. So if you have any questions, you need to call and make sure that your battery with your part number is gonna work for your application and what you're gonna do. Um, if you don't, you can explode yourself and poison yourself. So very, very super important to make sure that you know what you're doing when it comes to this right here. Make sure you call and find out first. This is the system that I came up with. I'm gonna go ahead and vent these out and uh, we'll show you how much more power we can actually get out of this uh, this this system running like this. So uh, follow me and we'll uh, we'll hang out and we'll check it out. Alrighty, so now we got our battery hooked up to here. We've tapped into the line that supplies both of these power inverters and we've hooked it up to the ground there. We've got our battery down here. Vent tubes go out down there, uh, out and away from the vehicle. And uh, let's turn this puppy on and see what she can do. So we're running LED lights right now. We're running battery charger. We're running a nine amp, 1200 BTU air conditioner. And let's flip on the key machine and see if it'll run it. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So that's running. See, off, on, We're running a key machine, lights, battery charger, and air conditioner, all in one spot from a 1500 watt power inverter. The reason all that's possible is because we have the battery that takes the load immediately and the, the, the vehicle system. So. Um, I'm gonna shut all this off so you can hear me talk. And it, you can see it keeps running for a while. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's not really necessarily the size of the inverter that matters, it's how it's wired up, the thickness of the wire, the gauge of the wire, and what kind of batteries you have. You have a high amp hour battery, like this down here, hooked up in the system, it's gonna run great. Um, and then tie it into your normal system as well. A Couple of other different things you can do is um, you can install a, uh, a, a, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but there's a device that you can install that will allow power to run out of your battery, your backup battery down here, uh, but or it will allow it to charge, but it won't allow it to drain the system. So for example, uh, if you leave your lights on all night, you're gonna have two dead batteries now, not just one, you're gonna have two. And jumping, that's gonna be kind of a, a difficult thing to do. So if you have that, that power cutter, um, 
you know you you would find those at a at a place that supplies winches or uh, you know off-road supplies something like that uh, you can run that system in there I choose not to for right now we'll see how it works I may add one later but I do not need to at this time but again the main thing is 1500 watt power inverter can run lights an air conditioner and a key machine no problem we don't need a bigger power inverter we just need to wire the one that we have currently correctly and we can run this stuff all day long so for more information check out the website below all right so we're back here 1500 watt power inverter <clears throat> we've got our negative contact for our uh, double <clears throat> our double dual battery system here um, and I just want to give you one more example on why on how this system works uh, so much better if you have a battery that is directly contacted with the uh, power inverter to go ahead and take that shock load and what right now is is this battery is not hooked up so it would just be to the regular car system it would be to the regular cars uh, 12 volt system you got a hot <coughs> power line coming in here and a, uh, a ground right here <coughs> excuse me and under here we've got an air compressor okay and I use this for blowing things out and uh, <clears throat> all kinds of stuff so uh, I'm gonna plug that in and you'll be able to hear how it works with <clears throat> the power inverter on and just the uh, the single hooked up to the battery so instantly you can hear that that's not gonna work oh. <clears throat> so let me hook this up right here and we'll take this and we'll put a <coughs> get our other battery involved here <clears throat> okay now we're gonna try this again. So now we've got the battery, the backup battery hooked up into it right here. And we'll go ahead and listen. And we can run lights on top of that. And I can even run my key machine on top of that. You can see the key machine with the air compressor, with the lights, and key machine. That's how much more power you're gonna get if you have a battery system that's hooked up directly to it along with the rest of everything else. I'm gonna shut this off, because that's about enough of that. But you can see exactly how much more power you're gonna get. This little tiny 1500 watt invert, I guess it's not too tiny, but you know, people are running, you know, 6,000, 5,000, 6,000 power, watt power inverters, and they're still not getting the same amount of power that I am out of this 1500 watt one because they just simply don't have the battery to take the shock load uh, from that. So, you know, the vehicle is running. Uh, it, as soon as we disconnect that battery, this power inverter with the vehicle running will not run that air compressor. When it is connected, when we have that battery back up in there we can run the air compressor we can run the lights and we can run the key machine all at the same time with no problems um, so take that advice and uh, best of luck make sure you always consult a professional before doing any kind of electrical wiring or anything like that uh, safety reasons make sure you have the correct batteries always check with a professional and get your plan approved by a qualified professional before attempting any of this thanks and have a good day Hey guys, it's the end of the video. Um, you know, help me out and help me help you out. Uh, right below the description box right here is a red subscribe button. Subscribe to me and then you're going to get the latest and greatest information that I put out. Sometimes it applies to you, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, it, it's just going to at least let you know that uh, we're putting out new and current information. And then right over here is a thumbs up button. Give me a thumbs up. Help this video uh, rank higher in the searches for the search terms that you're using and let other people be able to see this. Um, you know, that's the best way you can help. Interact, 
leave a comment. I will get back with you if I can and try and help you answer.